Hi, my name is Sormil and welcome back to The Driving Force. Now, over the course of the series, we have primarily spoken about professional motorsport. But remember, these professional drivers ought to start their journey somewhere. And that somewhere is the initial step of motorsport and it's called karting. I would say in the entire ladder going up all the way to maybe Formula 1 if uh, that's what most kids look at today. The most important step in that entire ladder would be karting. Because that's where the majority of your formative years are spent. That's where you learn all the most important aspects of racing. You learn your race craft. It sets your attitude for the rest of your racing career. Karting is where you learn your basics. You just have a steering wheel and an accelerator and a brake. So it's very standard. You don't have to think about gears or something. Uh, you don't have to get into the details of the technical side of it. So you get to focus on your skill and you learn the basics. And also it's very cost effective. So the track time is not that uh, expensive. You can spend a lot of time on track. Honestly, abroad kids start at the age of four or five. But uh, in India, it's difficult to start at that age. I do have some students who are six and seven year old. But as long as you're doing some serious karting by the age of nine or 10, I think that's a good uh, start to make a proper career in motorsport. The karting is definitely the purest form of motorsport. Uh, the first thing is you're just focused on the steering and the pedals, right? So you're not uh, thinking about many complex factors in the kart, you're just racing. You're new to the world of motorsports, so you don't have any pressures, any expectations. So you're just getting in a kart and racing. So you have a clear mind and also with karts you can race really close. A little bit of contact, a little bit of wheel rubbing is a regular thing. Most importantly, the kind of close racing that you get in karting isn't available anywhere else. If you look at right from Ayrton Senna to Schumacher to Lewis Hamilton, Rosberg, Vettel, all the champions, uh, including Verstappen, they have all spent years and years in karting. And without doubt, that is the most crucial step in your ladder going up to Formula 1. So it demands a lot more. So we keep working on their fitness and we meditate together to develop that mental focus. Sport needs more exposure so that people are aware that the sport is happening in India the funding, right? It's an expensive sport. So even to build facilities, it costs a lot. We can definitely have a grid of the size of at least the Asian grids have 30, 40 carters on the grid. Uh, that is definitely possible with the right amount of exposure. We need to reach out to them and tell them that, look, the sport exists in the country. It is clear how important the role of karting is in terms of laying a solid foundation in a racer's career. One alumni of Rio Racing, who is currently keeping India's flag high in the Global Formula 3 Series, is Jehan Darwala. The 21-year-old is also touted to be one of the brightest prospects of the nation for the pinnacle of motorsport, Formula 1. I think the way it started was I was actually just a fan of Formula 1, uh, watching it on TV with my father and uh, my family actually on like a Sunday. I always wanted to start go-karting but I didn't really know of many opportunities uh, in India. But uh, yeah, the first time I actually did it was uh, properly was 
with Rayuman, uh, Rayu Racing and uh, he held a training camp in Pawai. He came there with his father, very quiet. He was the youngest in the entire batch of maybe around 30 students. I was very certain that whatever I was saying, he was listening, listening very intently. And he was trying to grasp each and everything. It showed over the two days and by the end of the two days, uh, you know, he was a lot more confident. Uh, he was um, actually overtaking people on track, even when he was just uh, nine or 10 years old. The support of my family has been uh, probably the most important thing. They're always there to support me and uh, not only on track but off track. No matter how my results are, they're always there just as a family. Jehan is a complete package as a racing driver. The biggest thing that he has is the hunger that he has within himself to really, really want to be successful at what he's doing it. He puts in way more effort than anyone else I know in India. He is prepared to sacrifice everything else in his life for this goal of his. Qualities that would make me unique is uh, probably hard to say, but I think uh, I'm quite relaxed generally off the track. I don't really get much stressed. I don't know how the others are, but I think uh, that makes me probably quite unique. My main focus is obviously to finish well this year in Formula 3, and uh, then the most likely step for me will be to move to Formula 2 next year. If you keep performing well in the in the desired series you're performing in, then uh, yes, Formula 1 will come to you. Not only me, but the entire country should be very satisfied with what uh, Jehan has achieved. Uh, besides winning karting championships in India, in Malaysia, he then won the CIKFIA uh, Asia Pacific Karting Championship, went on to win a championship in the UK. He was leading the karting world championship and then uh, eventually finished third, which is huge. The media in India unfortunately doesn't give that much importance to karting, but um, from a mo world motorsport perspective, that is immensely huge. Being retained uh, by Force India was uh, the, one of the changing points in my career. Uh, they backed me, they guided me into the, the right areas at that point in my life. They associated me with good teams, so I always had the best chance to perform to my potential. And yeah, now uh, I'm not associated with them anymore, but uh, all the help has led me to where I am right now. I'm really confident that uh, he is in a position to get into F1 purely on merit. But of course, a lot of things need to fall into place. The right team needs to have a vacancy open and stuff like that needs to materialize. In terms of pure merit, I'm confident he'll be there. So my ultimate dream is uh, to drive in Formula 1 and represent uh, the country. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that goes on off track, like uh, I have a, a mental trainer, a physical trainer. It's hours of work off track and there's only limited time on track. So yeah, I've been working uh, for the last 11 years and I intend to keep working to get to Formula 1 and represent India. While there are many aspiring racing drivers in India who wish to make it to the top and are working very, very hard for that, there are many on the technical side too who are hustling it out and trying to make sure that they're able to fulfill the dreams of all these drivers. Let's have a quick look at what they do and just how they manage to do that. I uh, actually did electrical and electronics. Now I'm trying to apply my electrical and electronics background into the motor racing world. So that's how I'm here. I'm a mechanical engineer uh, with a formula student background. So from the formula student life, I developed the interest in motor racing, car racing and F1 also. I believe that girls can do the things what boys can do. And also in racetrack, we can do the things we can check the cars, we can drive the cars. Mine was a little abrupt. I was never on the path to be here. I was studying electrical and electronics. So when I, especially my parents were a little surprised, but they were all very supportive. Friends always seen their friends like 
who are girls they are always uh, in buying passions and all things but uh, from the start i was in this uh, path so yeah they are uh, surprised because of me <laughs> yeah i don't know i've been in engineering so there were a lot of guys there as well it was mostly dominated by men and then again here it was a very similar atmosphere so i've sort of gotten used to it now so it wasn't that difficult to fit in in every field today uh, there are girls uh, heading leading the field so in racing also it should be why not most of it is related to data collection or uh, if the driver has certain issues then we will listen to what the problems are and then look at the data and try to fix the problem so that that doesn't happen again my role is to look after uh, engine electronics body electronics uh, troubleshoot the cars if any cars have any problems i don't see why not if you're interested in it then you should follow your path if this is your path then you should go for it it's all about your passion if you have you can be it you can live it so there should be more girls on the track because they can do it it's beautiful to see how the technical crew and the racers do different jobs but there still is a wonderful synergy between them that keeps them charged up in pushing the limits when it comes to pushing the limits who can forget last year's AMU Cup champion Dhruv Moite one of the rising stars in indian racing Dhruv got a direct entry in the Indian Touring Car Championship by the virtue of winning the AMIO Cup and not surprisingly he has bagged the ITC crown in his very first attempt. I mean to be honest the Volkswagen AMIO Cup was something I decided to do in 2017. Uh it was a great stepping stone into saloon cars and the opportunities that VW provided was amazing. 17 I ended up finishing third in the championship. Uh continuing the stint in 18 I won the national championship. after which i normally thought that they would give me a single seater ride but when i got a call from vw saying that they have a seat in the itc and if i would be interested uh, i had no second thoughts about it the itc is uh, i would say one of the biggest championships in this country the oldest championship in this country and the kind of pride and uh, respect uh, that the itc drivers get uh, from the whole racing fraternity is unbelievable It's quite mixed to be honest. Last year with the Amio Cup it was uh, more of me. It was a single uh, mid championship so whatever efforts you put in are the results. Needless to say there are a lot of people that go back uh, on the backstage that are you know always always there behind you. With ITC it was so much of a team effort. I only stepped in when the cars were completely ready and ready to go out on the track. Uh, there's been 2 years of testing that went in with Ishan, Karthik, Rayo and so many more people involved in this whole program. Uh, so I think it's more of the team than me this time around. All I've done is done my job, which is driving a car as fast as I can. The Indian Touring Car Championship, especially with VW, uh, has been a great experience for me. Uh, a new car, a new team, and a completely new driver lineup. I would say the youngest driver lineup that ITC ever had. If I had to sum up my journey with Volkswagen, uh, I would say extremely fortunate and extremely lucky. And to put my fingers crossed, the journey is still not come to an end. I would say this is still the start. We have many, many more years to go, many more cars to come, and I uh, believe many more races to win as well. It's been a fantastic year for us, and of course, the best part. is uh, the first year that we entered the ITC coming into the weekend we had a mathematical possibility of being a champion but hats off to dhruv who drove so well so calm so collected i think uh, it's great that he's a ITC champion and uh, we are we are impressed with the fact that you know he is he has taken this honor i'm trying to represent uh, my country and my team back here So we're going to try and do our best. I want to do a mainstream GT championship at least at an Asian or a European level where uh, uh, in a proper GT4 or a GT3 car.
A race weekend has just so many different elements, but the bottom line is to give the best performances and to win the championship. While we are discussing so many different prospects from all of Indian motorsport, I think we should also keep one eye on the Volkswagen Championship. The series is going through some very, very fascinating times. The third round of the Volkswagen Championship was held in Chennai. And it was a three-race weekend. Qualifying was held on Friday and Saurabh Bandipadhyay from Mumbai took the pole position by posting a lap just seven hundredths quicker than Shobhamoy Ball. While Ayush Tenwala was third fastest, championship leader Pratik Swanavne was lining up from fifth on the grid. It was Saturday, time for the first race of the weekend. Paul Sirasaro started well and took a comfortable lead heading into the first corner. Shabamoy Ball and Ayush Tenwala also had a decent start. In fact, Ayush quickly took the second position from Shabamoy. Siddharth and Pratik then followed the trio. From there on, the race became processional for a bit for the top five, with Saurav started pulling away from Ayush. Down the grid, Kaushik Mohan Raja was making good progress, but Avik Anwar lost momentum in a close battle with Anmol Singh Sahil. Things were looking good for Ayush, he started losing ground and in a lap lost positions to Shubhamoy and Pratik, losing out on the podium place. Later on, when Siddharth hit him from behind, he lost out on even more places and eventually finished 7th. Pretty much untouched throughout the race, Saurav registered a comprehensive win, followed by Shubhamoy and Pratik in 2nd and 3rd places. Junior Championship leader Ayman Sadat finished in 8th position. Saurav also got the hat-trick of pole position, fastest lap and race win all in one race. It was Sunday and time for the second race, which means that the reverse grid rules would be in place. Harshet, who finished in 12th position, was starting the race in pole position and Saurav was now starting this one in P12. It was raining heavily in Chennai and the race control decided to start the race behind the safety car. Once the safety car was in, Harsh and Chris got a clean start. But their joy was short-lived as soon Jeet and Ehman overtook them and started pulling away. There were more bad news for the front row starters as Saurav, Siddharth and Pratik started coming into their own. Pratik was looking in ominous form as he set blistering laps in the treacherous conditions. And he also took the race lead from Jeet. He was extremely fast but perhaps paid the price of pushing too hard in the wet and playing with danger. He crashed out on lap 4 and was immediately out of the race. Jeet and Ayman kept their cool and finished 1 and 2. <gasps> Siddharth Mehdiratta registered his first podium of the championship by finishing 3rd and also got the fastest lap of the race. Saurav, the winner of race 1, climbed to the 4th position and registered a good haul of points. Soon after the first Sunday race, it was time for the second race of the day and the final one of the weekend. The grid order was set according to the second fastest lap in qualifying. Hence, Saurav was on pole once again with Shubhamoy alongside him. The car that Pratik had crashed in race 2 had to be repaired within a few hours and the Volkswagen engineers did a tremendous job to make that happen. Pratik just got his car in the nick of time only to be tested during the formation lap before the race start. The conditions were clear now with no more rain and the race was set for a normal start. It was a disappointing start from Paul Sirasaurav. He was quickly overtaken by Shumamoy and Pratik Sonaune who had an express start. 
sort of couldn't really recover from that bad start and he started to fall back. Siddharth too had a decent start and he was right behind Pratik. When Shubhamol let the door open, Pratik passed him for the lead and Siddharth too made his move and tucked into second place. Pratik, who had pace all weekend long, made this opportunity count and never looked back as he continued to lead from Siddharth. Not much was happening down the order. Jeet had a good squabble with Shubhamoy for the final spot of the podium, but eventually Shubhamoy prevailed in an almost photo finish. Pratik took yet another victory and Siddharth registered another fastest lap. After starting on pole position, Saurav would be disappointed after finishing in sixth place. The championship standings in the overall class were pretty tight at the end of round 3. Pratik's DNF in the second race has brought him down into third position with 294 points. Slowly but steadily, Siddharth Mehdiratta had been putting consistent performances and despite not winning a single race, he stands in a strong second position with 298 points. Jeet is now on fourth position with 284 points and the championship is led by Saurav with 305 points. So it's quite close between the top four going into the final round of the season. In the junior class, Ayman still leads the championship with 388 points. Virat Jaira Jala and Kaushik Mohan Raja are giving him a tough run but Ayman still continues to impress among all the juniors. Lap 2, I made a mistake, uh, missed a gear, you know, and that cost me quite a bit. Pretty pissed off uh, with myself and overall, yeah. I thought like, okay, no f***ing, I'm gonna give this position up. And I just, you know, broke, just yeah. broke. This race, I thought I'd take it corner by corner. Like everyone just charged in. It was a very uh, emotional uh, few hours for me, especially after the, the, the crash in race 2 up to the start of race 3. Honestly speaking, I, I think the, the Volkswagen team has like, done a fantastic job in putting the car back in. I, I mean, I'm, I'm so surprised because when you put a crash car back into place and I did not even have to test it once to wonder whether it's working perfectly or not, which is spot on. And you can see it by the results, so I'm really, really satisfied. So, yeah, just happy. I'm glad. Yeah. Well, 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 that was some race weekend. The championship is getting tantalizingly close. It's time for us to leave for now, but we will be back with a lot more action in the next chapter of The Driving Force.